in the last stream, we were, of course, working on getting through the beginning of chapter two here. We got ourselves the explosive furnace, this guy right here, uh, allowing us to make the compressed clay, which, of course, uh, in turn gave us the nine blocks of regular clay. And finally, of course, at the very end of the last stream, we got this solderer here, which is going to allow us to progress on down this line of quests. And I think, hopefully, by the end of today's stream, uh, we can get this guy right here, the atomic reshaper, uh, and thus move on into chapter three here, which gets into some really interesting uh, looking mods. We have stuff like embers. We've got the integrated dynamics storage terminal and just integrated dynamics in general, which is pretty nifty for automation. We have the calculator mod. And then we also have this guy right here, which is uh, forbidden and arcanus. So quite a few mods uh, available. And also I believe is this uh, solace? Yeah, we have Solus as well. Uh, so quite a few mods uh, to tinker around with in Chapter 3, but let's not get too far ahead of ourselves here. So you probably have noticed that uh, between streams, I have gone ahead and done a little bit of base reworking here. For the most part, I have just gathered a bunch of grass, of course, from a bunch of wheat and placed it down kind of around this central starting area. I've moved all of the farming out of this central area here and move those up to this new level. This is obviously a work in progress. It looks a little bit bland and a little bit boring. Right now, it's mostly just a ton of cobblestone and then uh, these four kind of five by five farms here. And uh, I do intend between streams to do a bit of work on or trying to make this look just a little bit nicer. Right now, it's a little tricky. We don't have a ton of blocks available to us. Uh, mostly we have cobblestone and grass. We don't unfortunately have a mod like Chisel installed. We do have Zencraft which is a pretty nifty mod that we might get into uh, in the future. For that, we would want to get these Zen saplings, which thankfully you can make with the Hearthwell crystals here, which is actually very interesting. Uh, I actually wasn't aware of this until right now, so I might actually get into that sooner rather than later because I do really like the look of these uh, Zen craft blocks here. But um, another item or another mod, I should say, that we do have installed is Architecture Craft. And Architecture Craft does add this guy right here, the Architect's Saw Bench which is another uh, block that I'm a big fan of, and it's also not too difficult for us to make. So over here, we do have a bunch of resources. I did, between streams, gather all of our ancient stone. Uh, you'll see right now we have just one left. I made sure to leave one in there uh, just so that we could see you know, where it goes in its wooden crate here. I took all of the ancient stone, burned it all into geodes, grinded all those geodes down, and then crafted up all of the nuggets into ingots. So now we've got a bunch of gold, silver, iron, redstone, lapis, quite a few diamonds and, uh, and emeralds as well. And so using a couple of these uh, iron ingots here at the start of today's stream, hopefully isn't gonna be uh, too bad for us. Uh, we might have to get a couple more planks, actually. Let me throw a few logs over into the old uh, sawmill here. So once we have a few more planks there, we can get the uh, large poly, and that should be pretty much everything uh, for the saw bench itself. It's really not too difficult um, of a block to make. But uh, like I was saying, if we open this up, you'll see there are a bunch of different uh, kind of blocks here that you can turn other blocks into. For example, if we grab some uh, cobblestone, and I didn't quite want that much cobblestone, if we grab just a few here, we could, uh, for example, make some slopes. Uh, we can do it with wood as well, of course, but uh, we'll probably go with cobblestone for now, just because it's a little easier to get. So we can make things like slopes, triangles. Uh, there's also rounded down here. You can get this like full uh, sphere, which is really interesting. There's uh, like pillars they have like windows and arches and railings, all kinds of stuff. And I do really like these uh, these pillars here. I think these look pretty nice, um, especially with um, wood. I'm a big fan of like uh, using the logs here to make like wooden pillars. We do, of course, have to bear in mind that we are, at the end of the day, still on a giant pool of lava. And so things still are likely to burn. So if we are going to put any wood down, we want to make sure uh, that we put the wood down uh, in a location that it's not going to be burned by the lava. Um, I have been kind of tinkering with wood a little bit. I think the like this block here might be far enough away from the lava to where it doesn't set on fire, although I'm not entirely uh, certain about that. I'm going to have to do some testing. Uh, in fact, you know what? Let's go ahead and put down like two planks like here, and we'll see if those, uh, if those burn or not. But uh, I do like this, and uh, between streams, I'll probably go ahead and utilize this quite a bit to make some, uh, some nifty blocks for us to uh, kind of spruce up the base with. But uh, for now, chat, let us press on with chapter two, shall we? So we got ourselves the nether crystal. We got ourselves the solderer. The next two quests here are for the mutation paste block and for the heat block. So the mutation paste block here is made either by crafting nine mutation paste or by placing down fertile soil 
next to you a rock call with the shard of the pure giver. So we've used the rock call before. Uh, we do have to make a new rock call every time, unfortunately. So we are going to need some stone, some gravel, and some heavy ingots. Uh, thankfully, uh, between streams, I have gone ahead and begun smelting up yet more heavy ingots. And uh, I do believe that we should already have some gravel uh, lying around somewhere we do perfect and of course in the last stream we did also manage to get this guy the uh, voltropic inventory explorer workbot which is what i'm using uh, when this pops up to search my nearby inventories and of course i do believe that we also have stone in here as well we do perfect so that should allow us to uh, fairly easily here get a couple of these rock calls for now i'll grab two i, I think we're definitely going to need more than one today but uh, for now we do only need of course the one and we also need the shard of the pure giver, which is the green shard, this guy right here. So let's throw this down like so. If we then right click with the shard of the pure giver, what we should then be able to do is place down next to that some fertile soil. I did find out between streams that uh, the fertile soil can be moved. I did move this from where it was originally uh, placed. And we can place this down over here. Now it does say in the book, I believe, that there is a possibility that the item will pop off. So if we go to coring, sometimes the catalyst box will dislodge and will have to be replaced. Now there is also another section of the book here called core stabilizing. These useful blocks prevent the cores from breaking too much its catalyst block. I'm not quite sure about the grammar there, but uh, uh, just place one block beneath the block that is next to a core and not beneath the core itself, and you will notice a big difference immediately. So as you can see here, the, this is the rock core, and the block that you're putting down next to it, in our case, the fertile soil, if you put a stabilizer underneath that, I believe that reduces uh, the likelihood that the block will pop off. Now, I do think that if we just continue to place this, there is a chance maybe that we will get lucky and uh, and actually be able to get some of this uh, mutation paste however it is entirely possible that uh we don't and so it might not be a terrible idea for us to look at getting one of those core stabilizers i believe there are three tiers of uh, of core stabilizers and the easiest core stabilizer doesn't seem too difficult for us to make here so uh, the light core stabilizer requires four heavy ingots one azul machine casing which is uh, azul ingots we made these in the last stream of course with uh, these guys the amplifying tubes and let's not let that despawn there and then uh, two mist rods and two gold ingots so really not too bad i will give this a couple more tries here but if this doesn't work i think we will look at getting the core stabilizer it worked. Perfect. Okay, so never mind. We will probably end up getting a core stabilizer uh, in the future, but for now, we did manage to successfully get the uh, mutation paste block here, which is very nice indeed. So we can claim our iron boots. Perfect. And then after that, we then have cactus. Green is not a creative color. So to make cactus, we need two mutant paste and then, oh, sorry, two mutation paste and then one of basically like anything that's grown. I think I will go with seeds here. Um, as you'll also have noticed, we do have uh, some new crates here. We have one for seeds because we have 2,808 seeds. I've been doing so much wheat uh, growing between streams that we just have a crazy number um, of these available to us. And uh, we also have 495 normie seeds. And so uh, making crates for those allows us to free up quite a bit of space in this uh, farming chest that we have here. Uh, you might also notice that right now we don't have any uh, mysterious dirt or mysterious grass lying around. Uh, that is something that I will change in the future. I do intend to set up like a new place to uh, grow Mysterious Powder. Um, but for now, though, we do have 663 uh, Mysterious Powder ready to go, and so I think that should be more than enough to get us through uh, today's stream, at least. Either way, for now, if we grab one seed here and we do something like this, get the paste, and then this, that gets us the cactus. And of course, if we have any sand, which we do perfect, uh, for now, I guess we'll just grab two. Uh, we can, of course, go ahead and uh, plant these down really wherever we like. Um, right now, we don't actually have a place for sugarcane either. And I do think that sugarcane is probably going to be something that we want to start growing in larger quantities going forward uh, because you can grow it quite fast. And I think it's one of the better charcoals that you can make compared to something like, you know, beetroot or melon or, or anything like that. Um, but for now, though, let's go and throw the cactus down over here. Uh, can we use our shift effect here? We totally can. Perfect. 
So that is uh, growing nice and quickly in the uh, in the top left there. Beautiful. Does that grow even taller, or does it stick at two? So it looks like you can also kind of grow the second level, but you have to be up at the level of the cactus. You'll see, like, right now, we're not affecting the growth of this cactus here. But if we go up by one, I think we will now start to affect the growth of this cactus. Uh, well, we would be able to if cactuses could grow uh, taller than this. But for example, I think if, again, we get rid of this here, this will grow. Once that's grown, that second one doesn't get the uh, the speed boost until we get up to the same level, at which point it then starts to get that speed boost. That is uh, good to know for the future. For now, I'll just leave these two growing uh, over here, and of course, we'll get rid of the old uh, planks there as well. Perfect. And uh, much like with sugar cane, we'll probably set up some kind of uh, larger cactus farm in the future. I'm throwing away the cobblestone, by the way, because we have 64 stacks of cobblestone uh, in this crate, and it is now uh, full on cobblestone, so we can't really store any more of it in there. We also get some lovely leggings. Perfect. After that, we have the refined circuit. JEI is your best friend. So this is where the solderer comes in from the last stream, that being this guy right here. And uh, just like all of our other machines, I believe we can put that uh, on this line here. We are still, of course, using the magmatic aero heater there uh, to power all of this. And uh, as of right now, I think this might be okay. Although JEI will be my friend, I'm assuming, and tell me how much power this needs. Ah, so this requires a minimum temperature of 125 Celsius. So I think if we're going to use this guy, we're going to have to break out our solid fuel aero heater and move this guy over to here. If we throw some fuel into that, which we might have lying around, that will hopefully bring the temperature up to at least 125 degrees. And then for the circuit, we need an iron ingot, which we have. We need a tiny pile of gold dust, which you can make by uh, grinding a gold nugget, which uh, we don't have, but of course we can get from uh, gold ingots. Perfect. And I will grind up a few of these because I think we might need a few circuits going forward. We then also need a refined circuit pattern, which you make by crafting a crude circuit pattern, which is made from iron and paper. So, of course, once again, that is our uh, good old friend paper coming in uh, useful, our good old friend sugar cane coming in handy. Beautiful. Uh, iron, we of course have. Boom and boom. That's going to get us the crude circuit pattern. For now, we'll just make the one, although I do feel like uh, looking at these future recipes here, uh, we might need more than one circuit, although maybe not actually. And then the final part is the circuit plate, which is made with clay, cactus green, and three paper. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. We, of course, do have uh, the cactus here now, so we can throw that in there. Um, I will go ahead and just keep two of these, I think, and get two cactus green. Uh, Clear-wise, do we have any clay left over from before? I feel like we definitely should. Yeah, we've got seven blocks of the stuff, which is perfect. And then uh, paper-wise, do we need one more paper? Yes, we need one more paper, which is also perfectly fine. So that gets us three circuit plates. If we put all of those in here, and this has lost its heat now, so I think going forward, I should make sure I have the items uh, that are needed for the solderer before we actually uh, put any fuel into the aero heater there. Uh, but if we put in the circuit plate, the iron ingot, the refined circuit pattern, and the gold dust, that should be everything for the circuit. And I believe at that point, all we need is fuel to actually, uh, actually run this thing. Uh, we'll go with carrots, given that we have over a stack of them. And there we go. We have a refined circuit. Perfect. Now, the Twitch chat has pointed out that now that we have iron, we can, in fact, go ahead and do something like this and make a uh, an item that I'm hoping you guys will be familiar with. And if we then grab some lava, we can use that as our kind of primary fuel source going forward instead of having to get you know, a bunch of carrots or beets or melons or sugar cane or anything like that. Uh, we can just grab the lava and then use that as our uh, our primary fuel source there, which is, of course, something that completely uh, slipped my mind, but is actually a, a very handy uh, piece of information for us to have, given that we do have uh, infinite lava available to us. Either way, we can now claim uh, the final piece of our body armor there, which is perfect. I'm also being told, actually, that we can craft the bucket of lava here. Ah, we can. So you can craft the bucket of lava into a bitter heat 
And the bitter heat, let me check the uh, the burn times here. So this has a burn time of uh, 20,000 ticks. And then this has a burn time of 200 ticks. So 200 multiplied by 64 is 12,800. So you do lose some of the burn time here. However, these are a lot more versatile in that you can you know, distribute them out uh, for stuff like smelting here. If you don't plan on smelting a full stack of something, you can of course just put the bits of heat in and it will only use however much is required. So now that we have the refined circuit, the next items on the list here are the magnetic reassembler and the incinerator. These both, I believe, require more of the uh, ceramic ingots. Ooh, we can actually make, so we can make the incinerator either with the uh, pink composite blend, which might be easier, um, or with the ceramic ingots. Other than that, the recipe is pretty much the same, flint and uh, dirt, both of which I'm fairly certain that we do have. Dirt we have in there and flint we have over here. So I guess the real question is how many of those ceramic ingots do we have? We have got 10. Okay, let's go ahead and grab all of those. Uh, that does mean that we do have enough here, actually the perfect amount, uh, six for this and four for this. So I think we will go with the, the ceramic ingot recipe. Um, I will hold off on doing the incinerator just in case uh, the quests are a bit janky. Sometimes you have to like have the quest available and then craft it. So we will start with the uh, magnetic reassembler. That gets us the magnetic reassembler and that gets us the incinerator. Nice, both of those were pretty easy for us to work with. I will do a quick check in the old uh, handbook here and let's take a look. So the incinerator is the simplest machine. It will take any item and turn it into ash. This ash has, has a variety of uses, including decoration and serving as a low power dampener for the explosion furnace. Items can be inserted slash extracted from any side except the top and bottom. Okay, that seems simple enough. You can turn any item into ash. Uh, we then also have the uh, magnetic reassembler, which I don't see listed on here. Never mind. The magnetic reassembler uses strong magnets to force small particles together. This makes it act as a reverse rotary grinder and is an essential component on getting started with energy on crystal farming. Items can be inserted slash extracted from any side except the top and bottom. Okay, so the energy on dust, which I hope I'm pronouncing somewhat correctly, is what we're working towards here. And hence why, of course, we have uh, these guys. The uh, extra mutation paste there is very nice. Uh, we did also get some uncooked meat kebabs which of course can be made better from a food standpoint by cooking them. However, it does also say not eaten yet. So we do get closer to those extra hearts if we eat the, uh, the uncooked variant. Uh, people did also point out in the Twitch chat and in the YouTube comments that uh, we have yet to eat any of uh, the gaming on caffeine's flesh here. And so in the interest of extra hearts, we're going to go for it. I'm actually surprised there was like no negative effect there but happy nonetheless. And that puts us, of course, one step closer to getting those, uh, those extra hearts uh, from the Spice of Life mod. But uh, over here, we then have the Inferno Crystal. The ash needed to craft this can be created by putting anything in the incinerator. So we make the Inferno Crystal by reverse grinding Inferno Dust, aka using the magnetic reassembler. The Inferno Dust can be made with Blaze Powder, which we can, of course, get from Blaze Rods, which we can fish for, uh, as well as Carbon Dust, which we, I believe, have made before. Yeah, we can put uh, Coal or Charcoal into our grinder, and then Ash, which you can make with that newly found incinerator. So the incinerator requires a temperature of 80, meaning we can put it down over here, and then we can go ahead and maybe just throw, like, a stack of cobble in there. That should get us, presumably, a stack of Ash. And then over here... The magnetic reassembler does require 125 degrees Celsius, and so again, does require the aero heater. And so at that point, do we have any blaze? You can't put a space in, eh? Hmm. I was going to say, do we have any blaze rods? I don't think that we do. No. So we are going to have to once again grab our golden rod here and see if we can't fish for one. Uh, that should be fine. And then the other item was, of course, the uh, the coal. So uh, let's grab our charcoal. And let's throw that over into the uh, into the old grinder. That is going to turn off the incinerator temporarily, but as soon as this is done, this should come back online. Not that we really need more than five ash, I don't think, just yet. So once again, I am being informed very helpfully by the Twitch chat that we do have a alternative way of getting uh, blaze rods uh, with this recipe here. We can craft two uh, bits of lava or bits of lava sand together to make one blaze rod. And this can be made with sand, lava, 
and a bit measure, which can be made with a bowl and two glass. That is a very handy recipe because uh, if you saw the previous uh, episode, you'll know that it took forever for us to, uh, to fish out our first blaze rod, and I'm uh, happy to not have to go through that again. Uh, do we have any glass? We do. Perfect. Let's grab uh, two glass there. That should allow us to make the bit measure. And then at that point, we need, uh, what was it, two sand and the bucket of lava that we already have. Uh, Sand-wise, I'm assuming we don't have any, although I would be incorrect in that assumption because we totally do. And boom, and boom, and we get a blaze rod. Nice. We can also use it to make magma creams from slime and from glue, which is pretty nice. We can make bits of lava sand. We can make fire charges, and we can also make heat as well. Interesting much like with the other uh, lava bucket. That is good information to uh, to have. For now, we can put this away, though, and uh, craft that down, although actually we might be able to grind it for more blaze powder. We totally can. Perfect. So we'll throw you in like so, grab some of the uh, ash out of there, and just as soon as that is done, I think we should be pretty much good to go to make this uh, inferno fuel here. Boom and boom. And then we'll throw that in, of course, over in the magnetic reassembler with uh, some heat in the solid fuel aero heater. And again, just as soon as that gets up to 125 degrees Celsius, we should get the Inferno Crystal. And as a result, we actually get some of those uh, bits of lava sand as well. While we wait for that, let's take a, a look one step further here. And I do spy the Zen sapling that I was talking about right at the start of the stream. And this quest wants us to make the Energion Aero Heater, which requires four ceramic ingots. We are going to have to make some more. Uh, we do need a second Inferno crystal there so uh, let me also go ahead and get another bit of charcoal grinding because we should have basically everything else we need uh, to make that second crystal and then the crude circuit is basically the same recipe here but without the iron and with the crude circuit pattern in crude and non-refined form if that makes sense and then uh, just a regular furnace so that doesn't really seem too bad whatsoever we are going to have to take another crack at the explosion furnace, and that does make me think that we should probably move the uh, saw bench here out of the way, just in case the explosion has, uh, you know, negative effects on, on nearby blocks. Perfect. Let's grab the carbon dust. We've already got the ash, and we already have the blaze powder, so getting another one of those should be doable. And we'll throw that in like so. Perfect. So the ceramic was... One block of clay, 16 iron, and I think five gunpowder, although I will once again check with the uh, book here. Yeah, so five gunpowder, four sand, 16 iron, four clay, aka a clay block, and uh, we should be good to go. So sand we know we have in here, one, two, three, four. Uh, gunpowder I think we actually uh, might not have, and I have forgotten how we got gunpowder the first time around. Ah, oh, of course, it was the red flint, which we definitely uh, do have ready to go here. We made a bunch the first time around, so uh, if we do one of these... Perfect. I will put you back there for now. And uh, that gets us the gunpowder. We have the sand. Uh, the iron we should also have. Let's go with 16. And then the clay should be available over in here. It is. Perfect. So boom and boom. And there we go. 16 more ceramic ingots. Perfect. Our second inferno crystal is complete. And so this guy should be pretty easy for us to uh, to do here. Let me dump a couple of these items uh, because our inventory is getting a little bit full. So once again, that gets us a crude circuit pattern. Uh, this time we can use that to replace the refined circuit pattern in here. And then if we take the iron out, I think that's pretty much everything, right? Yeah, just uh, three tiny gold dust, one crude circuit pattern and one circuit plate. So uh, once again, we'll put in some more of the uh, the heat fuel that we now have and that should make a circuit somebody in the twitch chat does ask what the ones do uh, so i did make a new wand between streams i made the diamond wand here uh, this is the same as the i think stone wand that we had before uh, this just allows you to place down um, a large number of blocks very quickly so uh, it makes actually building the ancient cobblestone cubes, which I have redone uh, between streams, much, much easier. So uh, for example here, if I get like a stack of cobblestone, uh, we can now do a lot more blocks at once. So you can just use the wand uh, to place down multiple, and then you can even do something like this, 
to kind of place down the whole line. And now we're out of cobblestone. If I had more, I could go up. So it makes making uh, cubes like that a lot easier. It also made building platforms like this and like that a lot easier. Uh, this is actually my second uh, builder's wand. I went through an entire diamond wand between streams doing all the building that I've done. But uh, but yeah, these are pretty nifty and really not too difficult to make. This one is two sticks and a diamond. So uh, a pretty easy recipe, all things considered. Either way, this guy is pretty much done. Perfect. And we will, of course, take the heat out there so as not to waste it. And at that point, I think we should have basically everything apart from a regular Minecraft furnace for the energy on aero heater. Perfect. I will claim my cheese sandwich. I will also claim my Zen sapling. And this guy is uh, pretty neat. I'll actually show you how, like, show you how this works uh, right off the bat here. I don't know if it's going to get the uh, growth effect from the fertile soil there. I assume that it will. Perfect. So these trees uh, not only look pretty cool in and of themselves, but also uh, allow us to get into Zencraft, which, uh, to the best of my knowledge, and also we might want to use the crook here. I actually don't know if the uh, the crook is going to work on these leaves, but I'll give it a try. It totally did. So with these, every time you harvest, you get these uh, Zen crystals. And I believe we can also turn the wood into Zen crystals. You totally can. And then the Zen crystals here uh, can be used to make both the uh, Zen crafting table, um, as well as a Zen block, a Zen ingot, and Zen stone. So we probably want to start with the Zen crafting table, although it does require glowstone. And to the best of my knowledge, we actually don't have access to glowstone just yet. I have a feeling that's probably coming sooner rather than later. Oh, I see. So actually, we can use the uh, the warm core with a block of gold and a shard of the shining dawn to make glowstone. That's made from the nether crystal and the crushing block. We'll come back to this as soon as we get our, our first bits of glowstone. But uh, needless to say, it allows us to get into uh, the Zencraft uh, mod, which allows us to make all of these, uh, you know, futuristic looking blocks uh, at the back of JEI here. So now that we've got the aero heater here, the next quest is the energy on dust. However, in order to get to it, we do have to pass through this section of the quest book because we need the uh, the quartz, I believe, to get the energy on dust. So now that we have the nether crystal and I have actually neglected to rebuild the nether portal between streams, I did, however, do a little bit more obsidian mining. So we do have 16 obsidian uh, should we want to build a, uh, a new nether portal, you know, somewhere in the new base. But either way, the heat block here requires two terracotta, six bricks, and one nether crystal. So I do believe that we should still have at least one nether crystal. Apparently, we made three in the last stream. As for the terracotta, it's just clay smelted. And of course, the bricks are also basically just clay smelted. So let's grab the remaining blocks of clay that we have. Let's put, uh, I guess, two of those in here. We're going to smelt those into terracotta. And then up here, we'll go ahead and get eight clay and then smelt six of that up into uh, into bricks. While we wait for all of that clay to smelt up, the next block is the warm core, which is obtained by right-clicking a heat block with a flint and steel. That should be fine. We, uh, we have the heat block. It uh, cannot be created inside of chunks claimed with FTB utilities. That is fine. Uh, we can always go ahead and unclaim uh, our chunks here uh, when the time comes. These are actually... Almost done, so I will go ahead and take both of those. Perfect. So the thing that we're after is a heat block, and the only item we're missing here is uh, is nothing. So boom, and boom, that gets us four heat blocks. I do believe that we should have um, a flint and steel. We do. Perfect. Let's grab that. And then let's, for now, I guess put this down over here somewhere. So if we do this, the book does say that we should unclaim our chunk, which you can do by uh, right-clicking here. And then at that point, if we right-click with a flint and steel, we almost lost it. I was not prepared for the explosion, although I should have uh, guessed that, given that the book did specify it had to be in an unclaimed chunk, <laughs> which is usually uh, like one of the things that FTB Utilities does is it stops explosions um, and like, you know, griefing from going on inside of your, uh, your claimed area. Thankfully, we did not lose the heat block, that would have been uh, rather unfortunate. And so now that we have that, we can take a peek at the uh, the next quest in the line, uh, which is the freezer. Uh, see your book of the wells for more information. Uh, the freezer itself, though, does require one more terracotta there, so I will get that smelting up right away here before we take a quick peek in the book. 
It also requires three smooth azurite, which is made by smelting weathered azurite, which you can get from cobblestone and shards of the living, shards of the root of life. Okay, that seems very doable. Do we have shards of the root of life is my first question. We do, perfect. Uh, we then, of course, have a plethora of cobblestone. So if we do something like this and like this, that gets us what we're after. Uh, I then believe that we were smelting these. Yeah, we need three of them. So we'll do one, two, three, and one, two, three. Perfect. What else do we need here? We also needed two azul ingots, or uh, yeah, two azul ingots, which we get from those azul blocks, which we might still have lying around. We do, perfect. Let's grab you and craft you down into ingots. And then the final piece is the Azul machine casing, uh, which is four Azul ingots and four stone. Uh, we have the stone ready to go. And so if we do one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, that is pretty much good to go. And yeah, I think that's basically everything. Oh no, of course, we also need uh, two shard of the born might, which uh, we won't have yet because we need to get these from nether crystals. And this is probably where we're going to have to get a, a new nether portal here because we only have two nether crystals and i think the odds of us getting two of the shards that we need from two nether crystals is probably very unlikely yeah we didn't get any <laughs> of the crystals that we need that's fine let's grab our obsidian and let's rebuild this portal shall we so i have rebuilt the portal here made it slightly wider so that it's uh you know central with our our base here uh, but the twitch chat has pointed out that actually you can get these shard of the bond might uh, crystals here from regular crystals as well so, uh, in fact, we might have some lying around, and we do. We have eight of them <laughs> ready to go. So, uh, that should actually be everything that we need for the freezer here, just as soon as we grab those uh, smooth blocks. Boom and boom. Perfect. I will claim that. Um, I will, of course, check out the hearth book here. So, if we go for freezing... The freezer will freeze liquids around it into solids, transform water into snow or ice, and lava into obsidian. Consumes some energy per operation. So we can use this to generate ice, snow, and obsidian. Consumes two energy per operation. Okay. Next up, we have the power crystal. I think this might have something to do with this requiring power per operation. I also do assume here, yeah, we can move that, so that's fine. I will put this in... Actually, no, I was going to put it in the ground, but that makes no sense, because if we're going to put water down next to it... Although, actually, if we do have obsidian over here from before, which we do, this is where we, you know, placed down water in the past, we should be able to put this guy down maybe, like, right here. And then we want water either side of it, I guess. So there is the chapter here on powering, which uh, does have the same power crystal icon here and i will check this out before we look at the recipe so it says the power crystal item has a variable recipe this means that for each part a different item may be placed the parts are uh, the nucleus in the center the relays in the center top and bottom so these two blocks here and here and the screens on the sides test out different recipes and see what is the best one for your purpose the power crystal recipe layout the power crystal has three traits power the total power this crystal can contain this may be recharged in the charger Range, the range in blocks that the power crystal can deliver power to, and purity, the purity will determine the amount of power wasted in air transmission when powering machines. Different items used in each of the three parts of the recipe will yield different traits. So uh, the nucleus, for the nucleus, we can have diamonds, snowballs, the mist shards, I believe, blaze rods, some kind of light ball and some kind of rainbow star. Power relays can be made from all of these blocks. The ones that stand out to me are, uh, I guess, stone, redstone, and lapis. Those are the ones that I think we can make. And then the screens can be glass, ice. Mm, is this mysterious powder blocks? No, they're not. So this page here gives us the, the uh, options in list form, which is a little easier than me trying to guess what, uh, what items are which here. Okay. So this doesn't seem, I guess, too bad. We can try a few different things here. We have diamonds, which is kind of where I'm thinking we might start for the old nucleus. Also, let me uh, throw a couple of blocks back in there respective chests here just to free up a little bit of space as for the relays so the top and bottom block i think what we'll do here is we'll grab some redstone and some lapis again you can press k 
to just craft those into block form straight away. Uh, we'll test both of those. I believe it is going to tell us what uh, like what stats the crystal has, so we can try both and see which one uh, we like better there. And then as for screens, we can use glass. Seems like a pretty obvious one for us to try. And then we can also use the uh, crystal blocks as well. Uh, how many crystals do we have? I'm going to assume the answer is like basically none. Actually, never mind. We have five crystal blocks over here. Perfect. So let's give this a try then. Let's go with, oh, I guess we need one more crystal block, right? If we we're going to make this happen, which is uh, one more mysterious mixture. That should be fine. So once we have one more crystal block, let's try something like this. So this has a power of 598, a range of nine and a purity of 59. If we swap out the Lapis for Redstone, that brings the power way down but inc and increases the purity in the range ever so slightly, like a really small amount. This one seems better, I think. There are other Nucleus options that we can go for. We could try like a Blaze Rod. I guess we do have uh, these bits of lava sand right now that we could do something like this with and we could maybe try uh, that. That actually gives us a ton more purity. It does bring down the max power a little bit and the range by a little bit more, but I think I maybe prefer that. I don't know how good purity is. Uh, purity is uh, the amount lost, right? Yeah, purity will determine the amount of power wasted in air transmission when powering machines. So I think a high purity makes sense here. Can you mix and match lapis and redstone? I don't think so, but we could try. No, I think it does have to be the same, the same block for each kind of uh, component. I quite like this, though. I think this is a pretty good-looking crystal. We can always charge it up. Like, this has a maximum charge of 2,120. With the diamond, that does go higher, and the range does go higher as well, but I think the purity is probably worth more, and I don't know if we're going to really need that big of a range. Um, I will actually also try glass. Yeah, for sure. Uh, the glass is in this section, right? Yeah, so that seems just definitively worse. It brings the power down, the range down, uh, and the purity down. So the uh, the crystal blocks uh, definitely seem better there. Um, I think in general, the uh, kind of more expensive an item is or the more difficult an item is to get, the better it's going to be. Like I imagine these two items here are probably going to be better than, you know, Blaze Rods or Diamonds for what we're making. But I think for now, we don't need to worry about it too, too much. I'm pretty sure that this having 530 power is going to be fine because this guy says that it uses 10 power per operation. So if I was to put this down, I guess like right here, I just right clicked by the way, I was hoping to put it like here, but I guess I'll put it here. Uh, I think that should be able to give power to this guy. So I don't know if I have to connect this or anything. It doesn't mention anything about that in the, uh, in the book. It just says a power crystal in the world. To place a power crystal in the world, simply right click with it in hand. So I don't know if this does work. Maybe we have to like replace the freezer potentially, or maybe this is working. Maybe it just takes a while. As a reward for that quest, we do get grass. We get the nourisher, makes crops around it grow faster, consumes one per operation. And we also get a block setter, consumes five energy per operation as well. Okay, we'll come back to those, I think. So the final, we'll wait for this, but uh, the final quest here is uh, for a block of nether quartz. It says snow can be created by using the freezer on water. And then once we have the snow, we can use the shards of the bond might with the warm core that we just made uh, to make the quartz, much like we did earlier with the uh, the fertile soil. Once again, this is one of those situations where you might need to get the, uh, the core stabilizer. And I will bookmark that just in case there, uh, because this might not work on its own. While we wait for this snow to, uh, to transform, the, the power is being drained. So I think it is working. Um, I guess we could, if we wanted to try putting down like yet more water, like if we put down water here and here, that might increase our, our chances of getting uh, of getting snow. But I think we did start with maybe 540 power. And so it has used a little bit of the power out of the crystal so far. So it's going somewhere. So I think it is working. But um, if we're going to make the energy on dust, it says under no circumstances should you ever harvest energy on with anything but a crystal cutter. Okay. The crystal cutter seems easy enough. It is... Uh, it is some more ceramic ingots here, but those are easy enough for us to get. To actually make the energy on dust, we need emerald dust, uh, diamond dust, nether quartz dust, and sand. That all seems very doable, actually. So we'll go ahead and get a quick head start, I guess, on the diamond dust and the 
emerald dust, just so long as you put those in the right machine, Isaac, that being this one down here. Once we get one block of snow, that should get us one block of nether quartz, which should get us four nether quartz dust, which will then, of course, get us the energy on dust. And then from there, we have the Primordialis Reactor, which I will uh, quickly read up on. The Primordialis Reactor is a machine that turns plant matter like saplings or crops into primordium. It requires heat that only an energy on aero heater can provide and will need a lot of infrastructure to work at an acceptable speed. Items can be exerted slash extracted from the top, uh, from all sides except the top and bottom. That's standard stuff there. So the carbon plates are made from carbon dust. That's easy enough. We do need four of them, which means we need uh, 36, like charcoal or carbon dust. We did get our first ice there. Ice is not what we're after, right? Hold on. We'll freeze nearby water into ice or snow. Ah, I see. So it could be, uh, it could be either. I'm just really hopeful that we get snow before this runs out of power. If it does run out of power, there is a section in the book about charging. Right here. So power, uh, power crystals get depleted sometimes. To charge them, again, you need a charger and the related multi-block structure. So we have to make the charger block and then the structure kind of around that block. To power crystals, right-click them to place them in the charger, then throw the items that hold charge onto the ground. They will be pulled in and consumed by the charger to power the crystal inside. And then over here, it gives us a list of items we can put in, uh, like mysterious dust, coal, mysterious rods. I'm just looking at things we can make. We don't have, uh, you know, access to things like mysterious leaves just yet, I don't think, or imprisoned light. But that doesn't seem too bad. Uh, the recipe for the charger is a little uh, pricey, but actually nothing too crazy. We haven't got any smooth onyx yet, so I prefer to not have to make the charger today. But if we, uh, if we have to, we can always pivot. But again, while we wait for this to finish, let's take a quick peek at this again here. So... Um, I think we might as well get a head start on making the reactor here. As far as the plates for the reactor, like I said, we need 34 carbon dust. So, so 34 coal or 34 charcoal. Uh, can we make charcoal the old fashioned way? We can. Perfect. We can just smelt logs down. That is fine because we have 21 charcoal, which we'll start grinding, I guess, uh, because it's going to take a while. Actually, we'll do the one uh, emerald first for the energy on dust. And then we'll start the uh, the 21 charcoal. Uh, we will also go ahead and grab a sapling and begin uh, getting some wood here so we can make even more charcoal while we wait for this, uh, this crystal here to do its thing. I have been reminded once again by the ever helpful Twitch chat that we can do this to get charcoal there much, much faster, which is perfect. Uh, there's our emerald dust. So let's get uh, the 30... Oh, we need 36. Well, one charcoal short. But uh, really, as soon as we get the charcoal, I guess we could look at getting the perfected circuit as well, which is basically the same as before. We take the uh, refined circuit, craft that up, and then put the diamond in the solderer. But uh, once we have that, we're basically still just waiting for this uh, for this snow to come in, which I'm hopeful isn't going to take too, too long. So I am being told by the Twitch chat that this only works during the evening. Uh, you can see right now in the top right there, it is uh, 3.46 daytime, so it might take a little while uh, for that to uh, to come around. Uh, for now, though, we can... I was going to craft up this uh, this pattern here. We could craft it and uh, and get the perfected circuit that we're after, but I think it probably makes more sense for us just to go ahead and make a new pattern here. That way we have all three patterns going forward. We have the refined pattern, the crude pattern, and uh, hopefully also the perfected pattern, because I think we are going to need all, all three of those uh, in the future as well. And then, of course, the rest of this is uh, is pretty much the same. We throw you in there. We throw in a diamond. And then we throw in some crushed gold. Uh, right now, we have three crushed gold, but presumably we do need a little more than that uh, for this perfected one. Yeah, we need nine for one ingot's worth. That is perfectly fine. Uh, I will put a temporary pause on the, uh, on the carbon making there. So there is our perfected circuit. Perfect. In the time it took for that to... Uh, Come around. We do now have some snow, which is grand. Um, I do believe that we should have a shovel somewhere. Although maybe not. Maybe we uh, we broke it. That's actually fine. Let's go ahead and make just like a regular iron shovel for now. Uh, although, in fact, you know what? Let's go ahead and make a, a diamond shovel. We've got so many diamonds. Uh, I don't see a reason not to. Perfect. We can then grab our snow. Brilliant. I will uh, replace that just in case we need more snow for uh, for more nether quartz. And then we can finally get back to this quest. We kind of got a bit ahead of ourselves here. We're kind of, I think, ready to make the uh, the reactor and the dust. But uh, as for the block of quartz here, 
we uh, take the snow and we put it down next to the warm core with a shard of the born might. So, warm core. Over here, we should have a shard of the born might. So, uh, once again, let's do this like over here. We'll do you with you. And then if we put down the snow next to it, it could pop off. Yeah, it is likely to pop off, I think. But much like with the fertile soil at the beginning of the stream, eventually this might transform into a block of quartz. Unfortunately, it's not the snow that transforms. It's the uh, the warm core. So it's actually possible we don't need more snow. But uh, it is also very possible we might have to make another warm core for each, uh, each block of nether quartz we want. I'll give this a few tries. If this doesn't transform into, uh, into nether quartz, though, we will probably look at getting a, a stabilizer. It worked. Perfect. Okay, so it did take a, a second there for me to actually get that to work. But uh, with a little bit of perseverance, it did get there in the end. And so now we can uh, take the block of quartz. We can grind that down into four nether quartz dust. We are still waiting on the, uh, the carbon dust here. That is for uh, this recipe. We need the carbon plates. Uh, as for the energy on dust here... Uh, we just need the nether quartz dust now. We have the emerald dust and the diamond dust. Sand, uh, we should also have. We do. Let's grab one of those. Perfect. Um, I will temporarily interrupt this to do something like that. That gets us the four nether quartz. Perfect. We'll leave the last three charcoal there going. So that should be everything. I think it's this way. For the energy on dust. We need eight. <laughs> <laughs> oh no okay so we have got some work to do chat we get two per recipe i didn't even look at the uh, at the recipe but we need eight energy on dust which means we're gonna have to get more nether quartz dust it is being recommended to me that we maybe look at getting the uh nether quartz burst seed again i'm still not sure what the idea is with the burst seeds or how these work but uh, it does seem that maybe we could potentially use our first four blocks of quartz to make a, well, I say our first four, our next four blocks of quartz uh, to get that uh, quartz burst seed and then maybe use that to get more quartz. So let's see if I remember how this works. We need to make another heat core. The heat core is a flint and steel, right? Yeah, so we don't need to unchunk again. I have rechunked, so we'll unchunk. We will uh, step back and eat. I don't know if there's a better way for us to do this. We could, of course, do it on some lava which would be a slightly better way of doing it, I guess. Uh, I guess we could also maybe do it a few blocks up in the air. That could also potentially help us with um, with the explosion that's going to happen here because otherwise we do, of course, run the risk of losing the, uh, the heat core that we're about to get. So if we do like this, maybe that's a bit better. So once we have more warm cores here, we are once again going to have to go through the uh, kind of rigmarole of grabbing the shard of the bond might, right-clicking that on, and then placing down the snow. Now, we're going to have to do this quite a few times here. And so I think it is almost certainly going to be within our best interest to make this stabilizer. The stabilizer really doesn't seem... These are heavy, not tough ingots. Really doesn't seem too difficult for us to make. We have the heavy ingots, we have the gold. Uh, the two mist rods were made from empty rods, which are just tough nuggets and glass. Uh, again, we have glass and we have the uh, the tough ingots here. So getting uh, the tough nuggets, was it like this? Like this? Should be fairly easy. At which point we could, of course, uh, use our own salt fluid here to, uh, to fill these up. Perfect. And at that point, we are just missing the machine casing, which is more of those Azul ingots, which oh, we're so close. We have three out of the four required, which is a little a bit of a pain because it means that we are almost certainly here going to have to get uh, the amplifying tubes back up and running. And we're going to have to make yet more of the raw Azul block, which is doable, but not ideal. So one block of... Azul later. Again, we had to get the amplifying tubes out, but that should be everything for this machine block here. Perfect. So at that point, we can put this down over here. Let's put it down like right about there. And uh, the Twitch chat has pointed out that we can do like this. 
and we can have multiple warm cores down at once around the one stabilizer with the one block of snow. And that should allow us to turn all of these into quartz at once. And uh, we do want to get one more, I guess, if we're going to get burst seeds. Perfect. We'll then throw you down. We'll use the shard of the bond might. And at that point, we should be good to go. So now with the power of our court stabilizer, hopefully this stays down longer. Never mind. <laughs> hopefully this will eventually transform the uh, these four blocks around it into nether quartz. It works. Perfect. Okay. I was actually surprised they all changed at once. That was incredible. Okay, so as mentioned, the Twitch chat is suggesting that we utilize these four blocks of nether quartz to make nether quartz burst seeds, as opposed to using them to make the energy on dust, because I assume that the quartz burst seed here can get you more quartz. I'm going to take a quick peek at the book. This might give us uh, information on burst seeds. Bursting. Burst seeds are an easy way to multiply the resources that you already have. After crafting one, place it on the ground. The seed will slowly build up pressure with the resources inside and will eventually burst in usually 10 times more resources than the ones used to create it. Be careful, though, because the new resources will come out flying at high speeds and in all directions. Ah, okay. So I'm thinking, chat. What if we like dug out a little room in here. So chat has recommended a three by three room, which is what we have here. I'm going to put the, uh, the burst seed down and I'm hopeful that when this, Oh my goodness. Look at that. We got 42 blocks of nether quartz. That is insanity. Wow. Okay, that is actually very good. People have pointed out that we can make things like crystal burst seeds as well to get many blocks of uh, of crystals here. They do require a crystal catalyst, which is like all of the crystals, but that is very nice. Oh my goodness, we have so much nether quartz. And yeah, we can do this with the, uh, you know, dirt, sand, uh, netherrack, prismarine, endstone, crystal, all these ones here. Dirt. In hindsight, I spent way too much time mine uh, harvesting wheat to get all this grass we could have used uh, the the dirt burst seed to get so much more dirt so much faster but now we know you know now it's gonna make my life a little easier going forward so uh let us see here then so uh, we do need to make six more energy on here which means we're gonna have to get uh three more of you in there once we have the energy on we're looking at this guy so uh, that is just all of our carbon dust here crafted perfect we already have uh, the circuit as well so that is fine and uh, we are going to have to get i think three more diamonds and three more emeralds as well and unfortunately the uh the rotary grinder here is not particularly fast i have been told though that uh, it is faster if we uh, give it more heat so presumably uh, if we were to do it in here our grinder would work a little quicker all right so we now have emerald dust we have diamond dust we have the nether quartz and we should still have sand we do. That should get us the remaining six energy on dust, therefore completing this quest here, getting us some energy on crystal seeds and some repairing paste. Place it on your left hand to slowly repair items on your right hand. Ooh, okay. We'll have to come back to that one. The next quest here for the Primordialis Reactor, uh, again, should be pretty much good to go. We have, I think, everything that we need for it. We do indeed. Perfect. There is then the primordium so this is made in the reactor we've just made using basically any plant matter and then the final quest is the atomic reshaper so i have started making uh, two more carbon plates worth of carbon dust here so we can get that going uh, we do need one more perfected circuit four more ceramic and one redstone block but all of that seems very doable the reactor here does require a minimum temperature of 250 degrees celsius which is more than the solid fuel error heater can get, but that makes sense because that's why we have the energy on error heater, Isaac, you fool. So if we just move you over here temporarily, let's do energy on error heater and reactor. So in the reactor, we want to just put plant matter. 
Okay, let's go with whatever we have the most of, I guess. We'll go with wheat. So if we put the energy on in here, and then we put the wheat in there, is that going to work? So we're almost there at 250. I've just put in a new energy on dust there. So this, oh, it is going. People have told me I should put in different items. So I will put in like some different stuff here. I don't know if this is helpful or not. I do see that it's going, but not, <laughs> oh, it is producing stuff. Oh, I see. You just need a lot of, uh, of things. Like it's eating all of these. But we're, we're like slowly but surely working towards one, one primordium. Right. So that's our first one. Okay, I I, I understand the uh, the premise here. Uh, I will put these in just in case we do get like a, uh, if we can get another one here. I, I'm not entirely certain we will because we don't have that much uh, energy on uh, left in there. Uh, we could throw some potatoes in as well, potentially, and some more wheat. But uh, I guess what we're going to have to do then is uh, potentially between uh, streams is look at getting a bunch more of like all of this stuff, like doing a bunch of, uh, of normie seed harvesting uh, to try and get uh, just a bunch of everything, maybe a bunch of sapling harvesting as well to get uh, more of those as well. We just have quite a few saplings actually though, so we could throw those in. Uh, we are going to get one more primordium here, which is grand. I'll take the rest out because I don't think that's going to get anything for us. We do have enough energy on dust to get the eight primordium. It looks like approximately, uh, if I use the variety that I did there, a one-to-one -one ratio. So that does look very doable. Uh, unfortunately, it does look like we're not going to get to the atomic reshaper today. Uh, but guys, that is going to be where we're going to wrap things up for today. Uh, between streams, I will go ahead and uh, maybe do some work on uh, base design, uh, you know, using the uh, saw bench that we made right at the start of the stream to try and make things look a little bit nicer with some pillars uh, and some arches, maybe something like that. Uh, I'll probably go ahead and tear down those uh, ancient cobblestone cubes, you know, burn them into geodes, grind them down, and then rebuild them again so we have more resources ready for the next stream. And I'll also see about doing a bunch of farming to see if we can get some carrots, some uh, beets, some wheat, etc., uh, to see if we can get uh, more of that uh, primordium you know, jelly or whatever it is uh, in the next stream. I did also see a quest relating to golems. There was a quest earlier in tier two or in chapter two that mentions using straw golems as a way to automate your farming. So we might have to look at that as well. That might be an interesting way of automating and getting those large amounts of wheat, uh, beet, carrot, etc. But for now, that's going to be where we wrap up the volcano block portion of today's stream.